Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about how the market is doing in 2023 so far, the Alibaba split, and the rules regarding a Roth conversion. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. It seems like 2023 is a down year, just like 2022. But how are the markets actually doing this year? Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Allison. Uh, obviously, we're still on the road coming back from a big volleyball tournament this weekend, the first national qualifier. The girls finished seventh, so pretty good uh, overall. Uh, they want to finish in the top three, but the you know seven and two is the overall record. We, uh, the two games we lost were the, the second and third place team, so we lost to the right people, if you will. Um, but And then we're on the road again uh, next weekend uh, to Kansas City. I know several of you follow that. Uh, but back to the question at hand, it's, you know, 2022 is just awful in the markets. 2023, 2023 seems the same. However, it's not. Uh, if you take a look at the Dow, uh, we'll go through each of the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. There's a little year-to-date, uh, it's easier to tell them from the chart. So the Dow is indeed down 2.8% uh, year-to-date. So again, those 30 stocks that compose the Dow are down. However, when you look at the S&P, the S&P is actually uh, in the green and not by a whole lot, but 2.55%. So you see one-year change. Again, that was from March 28th of last year. Uh, but this year, in 2023, up uh, 2.5%. And... What you've heard me talk about all along is you need to keep your tech investments, don't sell out because when they bounce back, they bounce back hard. And you can see this year to date change is again is at 14.41% uh, uh, percent there at the uh, bring it up there a little bit. So, uh, what, what's the moral of the story? It can seem down, especially if you sold your tech, right? Um, so, tech is higher as a beta, you know, greater than one. So, tech will take the bigger roller coaster ride. Uh, along the way, but when you have the snapback, the tech tech is where you want to be. So, um, you know, the, the, when you hear the roller coaster analogy I use, you know, the best place to get off the coaster is here, right? You, nobody gets off when it's going straight up, right? But when it starts down that five to eight percent, that's when you have to ask yourself with your big tech names, um, you know, do I need to do? Am I going to hold these through and you know through the bottom of the coaster, or am I going to sell these and then just accept the uh, you know the and I may miss if the market turns right then. So overall, staying invested in technology through uh, these big dips, and you will be happy you did. Next, Alibaba announced a split into six different companies. What will this do for their stock? Well, uh, the reason I bring this up, there's not too many of you invested in Alibaba. I was a long-time Alibaba investor, and I'm actually out, so I'm kind of like not happy with myself. Uh, I moved back into K-Web. K-Web is, you know, Alibaba is like a top 10, if not the largest holding of K-Web, which is the Chinese technology. I hold that personally. It's super high risk, right? You have country risk. You, you know, China at any point in time could, uh, you know, shut it down, right? Because it's communist, uh, communist country. But overall, I think they do, for a communist country, they see, they understand capitalism and they see the light. To be That's my opinion. I know if you watch Fox News, you're never going to hear anybody agree with that. Uh, but I think they do get it. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't want to start a war, and they have a you know an amazing economy, and they want to do everything they can to keep that economy going because we all benefit, right? Uh, well, we in their case, being the Chinese people, benefit from that. Uh, but when you look at the split, the company is down here, and here are the six different units. Um, you know, it, when you look at this, it's not because I want you to know the inner workings of Alibaba. But why do we hold Amazon? And what do I keep saying is the narrative for Amazon here in the United States? It has multiple ways to win. Amazon Web Services is the cash cow, if you will. All the other branches, logistics, you know, content, all that stuff is basically a free ride off your Amazon investment because someday it is going to get too big. And who's going to come in and break it up? The DOJ will come in and force Amazon to break up, just like Ma Bell back in the 80s. And then you're going to have all these different different companies, which is a good thing, right? So when you look at these, an Intel, Cloud Intel Group, uh, Commerce Group, a Services Group, Logistics, Digital Commerce, Digital Entertainment, you know, that sounds a lot like what uh, Amazon would look like if they split up. So uh, the shares uh, pop 10% on this. Um, they're also exploring, it's kind of a return to growth. So you take the, the big company, break it up into six smaller ones, and then give, give each of them 
a, a charter for growth, which is this comment for exploring uh, IPOs, uh, you know, and kind of get them growing again. So overall, I love the move in Alibaba. I think it's a smart play. I like that the Chinese government is uh, fully supporting it. And I think we'll see the same thing happen to Amazon here eventually. Last, what are some gotchas on Roth IRA conversions? All right. So um, you can, you know, well, it's tax time, right? And people are like, okay, well, my taxes are due. I want to convert some of my Roth um, to, you know, go up to the next tax bracket. So uh, the biggest misconception I want to clear up right now is that Roth conversions have to, they count in the calendar year in which they take place. So that's why we're, uh, we're actually finalizing our client calendar uh, this week. And we'll have that out for the beginning of the next quarter. Um, one of those, that's one of those things, that's a December topic. You know, that's like your last chance. So, IRA contributions you have until tax day. Conversions you do not. It's a calendar year thing. Uh, so I wanted to help uh, kind of clear that up. Um, some other, you know, other, and you you can do it multiple times a year. So really the backdoor Roth IRA where somebody puts in 500 and change a month and you convert it right away. Well, technically there are 12 conversions. Um, and if you wait to the last day of the month to make your contribution, the conversion actually happens in the next month, which you take that to December, January. That means the conversion actually happens in January. So you may contribute your, your say it's 6,000, you know, but actually your, your conversion might be less or more if you picked up the January one from the previous year. So uh, why do I bring that up? You can do multiple Roth conversions in a year. Uh, that's what the backdoor Roth IRA monthly plan does. Um, or if you have some smaller accounts, you can convert them all, kind of get them cleaned up. Uh, it counts for all of the conversions you do come out on one 1099R. So it's all grouped together for the year and then you get one tax form uh, for all of it. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll go into too many other of the, uh, the rules there, but if you're, if you're converting, you know, why would I convert now instead of wait for December? Well, the conversion now gets you into a situation where you can take advantage of the markets being down. Now, that's a little bit of market timing, right? You, you don't know where the markets are going to be, but I think the odds are that they're going to be higher, if not much higher, at the end of the year. So time is to convert now, sell those shares, convert the cash into the Roth IRA. You can buy the shares right back. And then when the market goes higher, you have more of it in your Roth. If you wait and the market is 10 to 15% higher at the end of the year, then you will pay 10 to 15% higher more taxes, right? Because you're paying a tax on the total amount. Of, of this proportion that you convert. So really you want to look for market dips. Nobody likes it. Everybody's like all upset and stuff, but markets will go up and markets will go down. And when the market's down, you need to think I'm going to do a uh, Roth conversion. Thank you everyone for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Akerstar. We'll see you back here tomorrow.